From somewhere in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. How is this possible, man? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's an every kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. We're going to start off this segment with a recent letter to an advice column called Dear Carolyn. Not as well known as Dear Abby or the late Ann Landers. But uh, it's out there, and here it is. Dear Carolyn, I am really uncomfortable with the frequency with which my wife is going out to bars with her friends for a, in quotes, girls' night out. Three times in the past four weeks. In fact, when and whatever this group of friends gets together, I'm sorry, when and wherever this group of friends, when, it should be whenever and wherever, who edits this stuff? This went through an editor. In fact, whenever and wherever this group of friends gets together, there is a lot of drinking. One time I went with my wife to the bar and guys were hitting on my wife. She says the guys were married and they were just talking. I don't see a problem with the occasional girls' night to socialize and blow off some steam. But I just don't see anything good coming from the bar scene. When I have discussed my concerns with my wife, she has told me that she can handle herself and it is, quote, too bad. She is going out anyway. Is this simply a control and trust issue on my part? Oh, you pussy. Hmm. Unbelievable. Now, forget what this columnist had to say. I couldn't care less what her opinion is. I'm going to jump in here and answer this myself. First of all, you never, ever should have allowed yourself to get into a situation like this in the first place. Nightclubs are for hooking up. That's what they're for. They're not for dancing. They're not for having a peppermint julep. They are not there so you can uh, have a little sushi and talk to the girls. There is thumping music. There is a cover charge. And uh, there are guys going there to meet chicks. Same thing goes for bars, where the theme is not sports. And by the way, here in Southern California, even that is no guarantee that it's not a meat market where people hook up. Many sports bars, especially in the South Bay, here in SoCal, they have sports on, and the sound is turned down, and music is blasting. Thumping music with sports on TV with the sound down. Well, these are just another kind of meat market. Now, I have no interest in being married. I live alone. And so this is not currently an issue for me. But let me just say this. It's been a very long time since I've been in a relationship with somebody who does this. Because I don't tolerate it. I don't tolerate it. And you shouldn't tolerate it either. 
And that means if you insist on being in a relationship or a marriage, you have to take this issue on head on the first time it comes up. You have to let the woman you're with know that the reason for going out to clubs and bars was to finally meet you. And she's accomplished that. There is no need to go to these places anymore, especially with her unmarried girlfriends. And, and frankly, the married girlfriends, I've got questions about as well. There's nothing wrong with getting together with the girls, and there's many places you can get together with the girls, okay? Your living room is a good place. You know, you want to have a few drinks at home? How about you, you know, get some martini accoutrements, make some drinks? You want to blast some music? Fine. Uh, you want to dance? Great, girls. Dance around my living room. Starbucks? How about Starbucks? You girls want to get together for a cup of coffee? Uh, no guys around? Fine with me. Got no problem with that. Girls, you want to go to a movie? Followed by a cup of coffee or a quiet meal somewhere? I'm fine with that. Want to go to the mall and go shopping and spend the day at the mall, ladies? No problem. Want to take the girls to go see a chick flick? Okay by me. In fact, I'd prefer you did it that way than dragging me along. There's a million things that your girl could do with the girls. Here are the things she doesn't need to do with the girls. Go to bars, go to nightclubs, or spend weekends in places like Cabo San Lucas, or Puerto Vallarta, or Palm Springs, or Hawaii, anywhere in Hawaii. That is not necessary. And you just have to put your foot down and say, point blank, I am not going to tolerate it. You can't tell people what to do. But what you can do is leave. Or wait till the end of the lease and then uh, she's going to have to find a place to live. You don't have to live with this stuff. And you guys who are tolerating this stuff, but you are angry, and I know there's a lot of you out there who are passive-aggressive, you're silently seething, you're pissed off, you feel like you have no control over the situation. You have a lot of control over the situation. You're just a pussy. There will be no girls' nights out. Uh, there will be no dressing up like a tart and going to a nightclub and leaving me at home. That will never, ever happen if I ever get into another semi-permanent relationship, if I ever have somebody living in my home again, well, first of all, shoot me, but if I ever do, that person is done going out to nightclubs and done going out to bars, unless I happen to be present. And frankly, why do we need to do that together? Because really, I go to bars to hook up. So why would we need to do that if we were in a relationship? Unnecessary. There are plenty of places to socialize, plenty of places to go out, plenty of places to have a conversation. In fact, nightclubs are notoriously bad places to have a conversation because the music is so goddamn loud. Why would you want to go there with the girls to have a conversation? That is not what these girls are going out for. They are tarting themselves up and going out to see how much attention they can get from other guys, how many other guys will offer to buy them drinks, how many guys will offer to dance with them, how many guys are going to grab their ass and they go, Oh, don't do that. I'm married. He, 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 he. No. N-O. Just say no. If your girl goes to Las Vegas for the weekend or Mexico or Hawaii with the girls for three, four, five days, your mission, men, is to not be there when they get home. Have the divorce papers waiting for them. Have the moving van back up to your place and clean out all your stuff and get the hell out. Because women are like men. Did you see that story the other day? Women lie more than men now. That's right. Women lie more than men. And so your job, once she starts doing that stuff, is you either tell her that you're not going to live with that, or if she goes, does it anyway, get out. It's that simple. 
I don't care if women like going out, dancing, going out, drinking, going out and having guys grab their ass. They're just never going to be in a relationship with me. I might have sex with them. I might bang them. But I would never be in a relationship with somebody like that. And if you get married to somebody who hasn't gotten that out of their system yet, you are in for a world of hurt. You are in for a world of hurt. Am I wrong? Tom Lankis. 1-800-5800-TOM. What was that again? I couldn't hear a word you were saying. Oh, I couldn't hear a word that you were saying either. I see. That's great. I like the level of discourse here. It's fantastic. It's the Tom Lankis Show. <laughs> Tom. That's our telephone number. It's Kyle on the Tom Liggett Show. Hello. Hey, this is Kyle. Are you talking to me? I just said that. Oh, sorry. Hey, uh, I totally agree with what you're saying, and I absolutely do not tolerate it. But I'm curious about the flip side, because I go out with my friends to bars and to, like, Mondrian and to, you know, different areas. And it's a bitch fest whenever I do it. So is there a double standard to that, or what do you think? Well, what I've done when I've been in relationships, uh, and I'm not working doing my job, which frequently involves going to bars and clubs to work, uh, I go to sports bars. I mean real sports bars. So I would go to places where clearly the it, the, the, the majority of the guys there are guys, and they're watching a game. Yeah, that pretty much sums up like every place in Orange County, though, especially like Fox Sports, which is a horror fest on any given yeah. evening. I mean, honestly speaking, I go to bars to hook up. Right. If I'm not looking to hook up, why would I want to go to that kind of bar? Just to be in the environment, I guess. I don't like the environment. You know what? I don't like the thumping music. I don't like the $14 martinis. I don't like having to scream to talk to people. Well, yeah, you, know, you I mean, tolerate it. You tolerate it to hook up with chicks and get laid. That's the only reason you put up with it. Well, yeah, I guess for most. But when you know, uh, I mean, what is it you like about nightclubs besides finding chicks who will do what you want them to do? Just to freaking hang out and to check chicks out, and you know. Yeah, but if you're checking chicks out, then clearly you're not married or you don't care. Yeah, pretty much. So. All right. So for me, it's not a double standard, not even the, not in the least. So you think that's the only intent to go to those places to hook up one hundred percent? I when when I am with somebody, yeah. I have no interest in going to those places, and it is not because I'm a good guy or I'm you know super trustworthy. It's just if if I'm not looking for that, I don't see any other appeal in it. I mean, think about it. You got. I guess at the end of the day, you're absolutely correct. But it just, I mean, come on. You really like that know, thumping wow. gay disco music that's playing all the time? No, not really. Right. Uh, you really like paying a cover charge to get into a bar? Uh, yeah. No. No. Really. Uh, do you like uh, having to wait in line to get into a bar? I generally don't, but no, it, that's frustrating, I imagine. Yeah, well, any nightclub worth getting into has a line to get in. Yeah. Then, then if you know if you know how to play it, you're you're on the list and you go right in, right, right. But once uh, you're in a relationship, what do you need that for? I guess just for the change of environment. And just there are a million environments out there. For me, I look. I could get a change of environment. I could go to a steel mill and listen to them. Uh, you know, <laughs> making all that noise. Yeah, I guess. So. I no, go to a rock no. quarry where they're you know jackhammering. I could do that. That's a change of environment, not an environment I like. Really? But hearing that techno music blasting and thumping, <laughs> having to pay a fortune for a simple beer. Yeah, you get raped, kind of. Hey, cut! you're telling me you like that? Uh, not on every given Sunday, but, you know, once every few months. Why would you yeah. ever like it? I mean, uh, the only reason I ever tolerate that is because I know... That the sweetest smelling poon is on the other side of that door. <laughs> You're absolutely correct, sir. That's the only reason I tolerate the atmosphere at a nightclub. 
Maybe it's just to fathom the idea. I don't know. I mean, if I'm not looking to hook up, what possible reason would I have? Do you like to dance, son? Nah, uh-huh. You like to go in and dance? Do a little Maybe. disco dancing? <laughs> All right. I'll take up too much of your time. All Thank right. You. All right, bye. Thank you, Cut. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Ryan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How hey. you doing? Go ahead. Hey, buddy. Um, how does uh, bars, as in a casual bar, maybe on the beach, fit into all that? Maybe where you go to socialize and meet interesting people? Well, again, it depends on what kind of bar we're talking about. There are neighborhood bars. Yeah. You know, the local Neighborhood bars would be a good example because I could actually go to a bar with me and a girl or by myself and I no could doubt about it. meet people. I mean, as long as the thumping music isn't too loud, you know, it's totally... Why does there need to be any thumping music? For me, um, yeah. if I'm not looking to hook up, I want to go to a bar with a, with a jukebox with rock and roll. I don't want any of that friggin' dance music, okay? It's just a bunch of gay yeah, disco like music, and I have no dance. interest in it. You like to dance. Correct. Oh, I boy. think it is the best way to get your foot in the door with women. Of but again, you're types. looking to get women. Um. Yeah, if you're trying to get women, that is... But a, that's the point I'm trying to make. If, if oh, you're yeah, not trying I to get women, why would you go to a club? If I'm trying not to meet women. If you're not okay, trying to meet... Listen to what I'm yeah. saying. If you're not trying to meet women, why would you go to a nightclub? Um, actually, besides just meeting women, there's no real reason. I was just talking about a casual bar scene where you can meet just interesting people. I actually just broke up with my girlfriend of two years because of that going out to the bars and stuff like that, she she thought that was more interesting than uh, bettering herself. So I agree with you wholeheartedly on Not that. Not to mention she was bored with you. Uh, I don't know about that. She's still calling and all that. Well, she may be calling because uh, most people don't know what they've got till it's gone, as the song once said. Yeah, and I'm, I'm kind of in that in that scenario now, you know. I, well, I that's like perfect. Now that you got her out the door... Uh, you can hit that and quit it now and then. <laughs> yeah, that option is definitely open. But don't be don't be falling for it again. Yeah, I kind of want to keep my keep my nose out of it completely because right. it is a past relationship. You know, and those are always trouble, the drunk dialing and all that noise. Right. <laughs> so I agree with you, Tom. I was just I heard the last guy talking about going out to bars, and you can go out to a, a casual bar on the beach and. As long as the music's not too loud, you can meet people. We're not, look, interested. you can meet people at a bus stop, okay? We're not talking about where you can meet people. I'm yeah. talking about the places you're most likely to meet people. Yeah. Nightclubs being at the top of the list. Num- numero uno. <laughs> so if yeah. your girl wants to go to nightclubs... With she, her friends. With with or without her friends. Her single friends. It, like right. She's looking to get attention from guys. To say the least. Because I, I ask you the same questions. What interest do you and what interest do you have in going to these places? And it's to be with the friends. You know, that's the biggest reason. Right? I, Why can't she meet with your friends with her friends in your living room? And there you go. And all I get from it, the thing that I see most is that even if she's not going to get guys, she's going to be bait to attract guys. And, and by the way, that. why do they have to dress like tarts? <laughs> and get as pretty as they were the day you met them. You know, I, I don't understand it myself. Well, I'm, no, no, no. You do understand it. That's the thing. I, I think I do because you know I recently just went through this and I put my foot down just like you said, man, and I uh, made a short story of it and just ended it. Cause, Go on. Cause there's no alternatives when that's all they want to do, and there's no real reason behind it. Fine. She can do what she wants on her own. Exactly. And now I'm a single male living by myself and uh, looking for a lovely lady to entertain, so I guess I'm going to be going out to the to nightclubs. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Now's well, the thanks. time. 
Hey, thanks a lot, Tom. It's it's really good talking to you, man. I've listened to you for a long time, and I uh, appreciate all your advice. Hi, Ryan. Thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Joanna on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Joanna. What side are you really on? Uh, what kind of a leading question is that? Are you on the women's side or the men's side? I'm on my side. Well, are you a man? I'm a man, and I'm on my side. Okay, then you'd be on the man's side. I don't necessarily agree with all men about everything, because a lot of men uh, are pussies uh, who don't... Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, ...who don't... Uh, well, I'm sure, I'm sure you love right them. right there you were on the woman's side, see? What? Why don't you just get to hey, well, look? Why, look, instead of instead of being an idiot, why don't you get to the point? I asked you whose side. No, no. You really uh, are. All right, and I answered it. So thank you for the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. It's Drew on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Drew. How you doing? Great. Yeah, I've been uh, tuning in over the years, and uh, once I found out you reached number one. It's daily now. See, you bet on the right horse, Drew. Anyway, I've got two things for you. First of all, you need to tell that last chick to pull her head out of her butt. Secondly, i got a comment for you. And third, I have a question for you. Okay. Okay, the the comment I have is I was going out with this screaming hot Playboy bunny looking girl. Just beautiful, right? But she had to always, you know, not always, but occasionally go out with her just friends. It, oh, my God, it's just like, oh, my God, totally my friends that I'm going to see. Okay, so I knew deep, deep down inside there was something going on. I just knew it, but I couldn't pinpoint it, right? But it was always just friends. So one time she uh, hands me her cell phone, wants me to listen to this funny message, but unbeknownst to her, she had her code on, uh, you know, their password on the cell phone. You mean, it, you mean it appeared on the screen? Yeah. So she had entered her code, and it appeared on the screen, so you were able to filch it. Correct. Bingo. I'm like, oh, my God, this is my golden ticket here. So I would listen to the message, hang up, all good. And while we can't use that word on the air, uh, certainly not in that context. For exa well, yeah, I mean, is, I mean, for example, for example, we could talk about the Yankees uh, blowing a six-game lead. We could say that. But what you just said, we can't say that. Oh, I will. So if you're talking about the Yankees, and uh, and the Yankees have blown a number of leagues, that then you can use that word. But you can't use it the way you did. It was actually on the Angels, but uh, yeah. anyway, anyway, it's just devastating. Remember how the Angels blew that lead in 1995 to the Mariners? <laughs> now, that's what I. That's what I call blowing a lead. Okay, so anyway, nevertheless... Uh, but you can't use the word the way you used it. Okay. Because okay. that would be... You can't apply that to your ex-girlfriend or your girlfriend. That that would be wrong. Anyway, it's just a word, you know, a little cautionary advice for those guys out there who uh, girls got to go out and see their friends at nightclubs. Yes. So anyway, I'm pretty much done like you are, Tom. I just, I can't. So for home. people who didn't hear what you said, because we had to believe it, let's just say uh, she was having encounters with guys uh, right. at these nightclubs. And you found, right. out, you found out because you had her voicemail code. That's right. It took me less than 10 days. Come on, man. I've gone out with this chick for three years, and I find out in 10 days. So, so did you, con you, so wait, so you confronted her with this? Tom, I dumped her ass five minutes later. So you didn't even tell, did you tell her why? Hell yeah. How did she react? She started lying and lying. What are you talking about? I have no idea what you're talking about. What are you talking? So finally, I basically had to grab her by the collar and I said, who is, you know, so-and-so? Finally, you know, what her, you, know, you know what she said? What? I did it for my son. Just, just, she said what? I did it for my son. She did it for her son? Yeah, I have no clue what that means. Was she getting paid for it? <laughs> so, Dan, that's a, that's a tough thing to get over. It's really, really rough. Um, and that leads to my question. Tough thing to swallow? Huh? That leads to my next question for you. Yes. 
finally reached a point in life where I started making the big bucks, right? Right. And it's a good thing, you know, certainly not at your level, but uh, things are rolling pretty well. You know, I've got this apprehension about getting into, I'm kind of like, you know, as you say, well, you do use the word pussy. I'm kind of a pussy sometimes around women. Yes. I hate that part of myself. But what do you do about dry spells, man? I, I'm, I'm at the point where I'm trying to get the wool. This is why you have to have a bullpen. A what? The, a bullpen. You see, where guys make a mistake is they put all their eggs in one basket. When they find somebody who's good in the sack, or they find somebody they enjoy hanging out with, they put all their effort into that one person. In reality, you want to have a roster like a baseball team of maybe four or five different women that you call upon in certain situations the way you call upon another baseball analogy. You call upon the different specialists in your bullpen. Yeah, Tom, I'm just tanking lately. Badly. Yeah, but see, if you had a, if you had a, you know, like like a baseball team has a long reliever, uh -huh. you know, they got the setup man, they got the closer, they got the innings eater. You see, uh, there are women who are good for they clean up good. You can take them to a company Christmas party. There are women who are just nasty, and they'll do anything you want, but you couldn't let your mother or your family meet them. Uh, there are women who would be good to, that your family might enjoy meeting and might think highly of you if they saw you with them. You need to have a, a, a roster of women that you can call upon for their various strengths and leave them home when they have various weaknesses. Okay, I heard you say the other day, uh, you know, some guy was saying, yeah, what lines should I use? Well, how do I go in and approach them? How do I do this? That? You say, you don't. Let them come to you. Right. Well, Tom, that hasn't been working. Yeah, but the, the, here's the problem. Why don't when one woman stops seeing you, or when you break up with someone, why do you have nobody? Well, to be honest with you, have been uh, like I said, you know, focusing on uh, making the big bucks, and that's that's. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> you're hearing me focusing on making the big bucks, but you know what? I believe in having a bullpen. Yeah. And then you have you have the right woman for the job whenever you need the right woman for the job. And then, you know, when uh, somebody in the bullpen is down, you know, they've uh, got their period or they've uh, got a headache or they need to wash their hair or they just don't feel like it. Then you call someone else from the bullpen to relieve them. Right. I got to get the pipeline going, Tom. That's, you got to prime the pump. And then instead of focusing on any one girl. Always have several. Never be in love with them. Never come on. You've, it's like falling in love with a urinal. A urinal is there. You use it. You flush it. You wash your hands and you get out. That's how you have to think of women. You know, you're right, man. You are right. I am. All right, man. I'll keep what put together here. I mean, but, you ever uh, fall in love with a urinal? You know, you got that. Uh, the urine cake in there that says say no to drugs. You ever fall in love with a urinal? Absolutely not. You use it and you go. That's right. That has to be you. All right, but the point is, at this particular point, I got nothing. I understand. So now it's time to build up your roster so that this never, ever happens again. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You are the voice of reason in this godforsaken world. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. If your girl wants to spend the night out with the girls, go to nightclubs, bars, boozing, flirting, dressing like a complete slut, why do you tolerate it? Allie on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Doing great. Good. I just wanted to let you know, I've been married for, it'll be four years in July, and I've been with my husband for almost nine years now, and he's actually with me in the car right now. 
And I still go clubbing with my girlfriends and go out to the bars without him. And it has absolutely zero to do with meeting men. But it does have to do with getting attention from men because that's why no. you dress. That's why you dress like a little tart when you go out to these clubs. How do you know how I dress? Because that's how everybody dresses. That's how you get in. That's how you get past the line. You have to quote unquote dress to impress. That's what all the ads say, and that's what you're doing. But I'm dressing for myself, not for uh, Right. And I yes, can sure ass you are. Darling, uh, you could, if, if it's all about meeting your friends, there's plenty of other ways to meet your friends without going to a nightclub. But what if we like 80s music and want to go to like an 80s uh, you dance could go, club? You could go turn on, uh, you know, My FM, and uh, you could have a couple of beers. You could, you could listen to a I CD. I think so. No, you want to go out where there are guys trying to grab chicks. That's where you want to be. Really? That's really what you think? That's the that only is, reason. That is that. Well, I'm want not to be saying it's the. I'm event. not saying it's the only reason, but it is certainly one of the reasons. I can tell you, I have never. See, he. I'm married. Ooh, don't, don't do that. Ooh, you know, come on. I've seen your type. I've grabbed the asses of your type. <laughs> That's why. Yes, I have. Because you know what? I've been in clubs, and I. You know what? I've been all over women like you, and women like you let guys like me frequently get a lot further than their boyfriends or husbands would ever imagine. Really? Really. Uh, you know, as a person who is a fairly independent woman, I uh, would definitely not let... You know what I say to women who are independent? You know what I say to women who say what you just said? If you're independent, that's great. Get a divorce. I don't want a divorce. Well, I love my husband. Well, but you're so independent. What do you need him for? Honey, am I independent? Yeah. See? That's my point. <laughs> if you're independent, what does he need you for? I'm not in a marriage because I want to be independent. I'm in a marriage because I love my husband. But if you're independent, you don't need a husband. That is the biggest load of crap. No, it's not. You don't need a husband. Oh, my gosh. I am not married because I want to be codependent. I'm not talking about being codependent. How about interdependent? Okay, so you're saying anyone who's married can't be can't function as an individual? I'm not saying they can't function as an individual, but uh, certainly if you want to go to the supermarket, you can function as an individual. If you want to go to Starbucks and meet your friends for a frappuccino, you can function as an individual. Uh, so if you want to go to the gym and work you out, you can, an no, you can go everywhere except the very small list that I gave, which is... Okay, can you do me a favor? Can you email me that list? That, I don't you know, need to. I, I just, I just announced it on the air, you know what? When the show reruns, just transcribe. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Thank you, dear. <laughs> I'll be emailing you the list. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Dave in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat. On the Tom Likas Show, hello. Boy, you got that right, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, believe me, I've been to Portland many I, times. I know. I caught your show one time. It was awesome. Thank you. Anyway, I didn't tell Dino the whole story. Years ago, I moved to California. I'm you haven't even told me any of the story yet. Oh, okay. Well, I apologize. I moved to California uh, about 10 years ago. Met this chick. Um, things were going along fine. I uh, got a pretty decent job. Uh, you know, it was a 3 to 11 shift. I started to come home, and she wasn't there waiting for me. So, you know, I was kind of a puss at first. It was before I started listening to you. Um, I didn't think anything about it. You know, a couple of weeks would go by. It kept happening. It kept happening. A few times she would call me and say, hey, come out and meet me here. I'm here. And, of course, just like you said, it was a sport bar. Um, so I'd go out there and, you know, I'd kind of sneak my way in there and find out what she was up to. And sure enough, she had two or three guys around her. And I'd walk up there and make my presence known and, Man, all oh, you know what broke loose. She actually got in my face a few times and told me not to interrupt. They're buying me drinks. What are you worried about? I'm going home with you. Well, that proves my point right there, doesn't it? It does. The story gets worse. I finally DTB'd her um, a few times. She wouldn't come home at all. I mean, 2, 3 in the morning, I'd be at home, you know, tired from work. She wouldn't come home. Wouldn't see her till 4 By the way, the what time do bars close in the state of Oregon? 2.30. 2.30. And she wouldn't come home till beyond 3. Well, this was down in California, yeah, when I was living Oh, there. and in California, bars close at 2, and most of them close well before 2. I'm uh, very aware of that. But being the push that I was, didn't think anything about it. Oh, boy. 
I finally wised up, started listening to you, and DT beat her and been happier ever since. How did she react when you dumped her? Got the uh, few weeks of phone calls. I miss you. I want you back. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It won't yeah. happen again. Yeah, you know what's really going on there. You know, I can't pay the rent. How can I go out at night and drink and have fun if I can't have somebody paying the rent? That's exactly what it was. That's exactly what it was. Oh, I know was, what it was. There was one other time. Like you're going to think I'm a total puss for telling you this, but there's a success story. Success story. Sorry. Um, there was one time I caught her texting and talking on the phone while I was there. I ripped the phone out of her hands and said, who the, you know what, are you talking to? It was this dude that had texted her and said, meet me at so-and-so at 3.30. While I was standing right there. There you go. So all of these dudes listening to your show, they're friggin' idiots if they let their ladies go to the club with ladies night out. Do not do it. You're only asking for trouble. Yeah, well, that, that's how I see it. Uh, yet there are people out there who are complete pussies and who just don't get it. I was one of those. I was totally one of those. I'm hey, hang on that. a second, Dave. Let me get Scott in here. Scott, you don't agree with Dave. Why not? No, I, I think he's a pussy. I, actually, Tom, I've listened to you talk about this subject a number of times. And every time I listen to you talk about this subject, I think that you're backwards and it is sort of a pussy attitude to take. Nothing pussy well, about it. In fact, I think it takes real balls to stand up for your rights. Well, well, here's the thing, man. Who cares what she does? If all I'm doing is having sex with someone, I don't care what they do. I don't care where they right. go. I don't care what time they come home. If I'm paying the rent, if I'm right. paying for the, her clothes, if I'm paying the cover charge for her to get in nightclubs, then I right. do care. If she lets to live in her own apartment, pay her own bills... Have her own uh, expenses, decorate her own place. I'm perfectly fine with her going anywhere she wants, any time she wants. It's when I'm paying the bills. That's when the limitations are coming into play. Why do you have? To, I never understood why you have to take such a hard line and say, "Well, if you're going to go out and party, then I'm just going to leave." How? What kind of? There's no strength in that. There, no man has to stand up like that. There's nothing powerful about that. That's pussy. Are you in a relationship? Are you in a relationship right now? Yeah, I am. If, 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 with the attitude you have, your chick is going to walk all over you. I'm telling you that right now. And I'm sure there's three or four million other guys that will agree with me. Wait, wait, wait. Just let me tell you this. If she goes out and she does that and she's uh, messing around, my philosophy is great. Go right ahead. I'll find out about it sooner or later. But why, why should you I have to play investigator? Why should you have to play detective? I, you don't have to. One way to guarantee to? it is not to pay her cover charge in the nightclubs. There you go. There you go. Now, why do I have sure. to stand up and say and stamp my feet like a little kid and say, "Well, you can't have what you want because I'm afraid you're going to go have sex"? What your, girl's gonna, your girl's going to walk all over you. you. That's what kind of life you want. Well, I've been in a relationship for 10 years, and I personally don't really care about that because if she did do that, I'd be out the door. But how will you ever know? How will I ever know? You know, Tom, I, there's one thing that separates you from me. Oh, yes, trust. Yeah. You're a trusting person. Okay. It's all about yes. trust. Yes. No. Yes. Not, not no even Dave was a trusting person, too. Absolutely it was, and she walked all over me with her 8-inch stilettos. Here's what I'm saying. You make it sound like I trust her, and that's not the point. The point is I trust me, and the point being that I live up to my standards, and if I'm feeling she's doing that, then I live by my own rule, and she gets axed. I don't you know what, dude? I did that, too. I did that, too. I said, yeah, you can go out to the club. You're not going anywhere because I know I can lay it to you pretty good. And that's she did what, it anyway. What the caller's name is, dude, you're a baby, and you got your ass whipped. And You're right, I, and that's why I know better. That's why it won't happen again. I, yeah, it won't happen again. Okay, but you are you still have a cry in your voice, like you still need someone to help you lick your own wounds. What I'm saying is, in Tom's, what Tom is trying to say, like I said, I've heard him take this line a hundred times, and Tom, I've never heard you once say, hey, man, I trust me. At Enough. least you know I'm consistent, and that's the important thing here. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com.
Tom Likas Show.